Okay, so in the today's course, I'm talking about the introduction to the big data system and some of the limitations of the relational database. So basically, uh, so far we covered all the things about relational database. So we mainly talked about database design. Uh, we started from conceptual data modeling using entity relationship diagram. And we also talked about how to translate that into relational model uh, using the relational data modeling. And then we talked about data implementation in MySQL uh, utilizing the relational model. So we covered uh, forward reverse engineering and also synchronization to uh, update your database implementation. And then we talked about structured query language recently. So in the structured query language, there are three different types, data definition language, which is used to uh, create or alter tables or add a new field, something like that. And also there is a data manipulation language. Uh, basically, we, cover, we covered a lot about data manipulation language and we put our most focus on that. It's about utilizing select statement. We also do aggregation and we use multi-table query. And also we, we talked about update query and those things. And the last one is data control language, uh, which we didn't really talk about in this class, but you can utilize it uh, using the user interface of the MySQL actually. So even though you don't know about, so basically for DDL and DCL, even though you don't know exactly SQL code, you are able to utilize it in MySQL. Uh, but for DML, it's very important to know it because uh, you may utilize a DML SQL in many other applications, not just in uh, MySQL directly, but also uh, in other data analysis software like Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Power BI. So that's all we covered in our course, basically. And let me uh, yeah, talk something about some conceptual things. Uh, there are some of the advantages of the relational database. So relational database has been in our world for a long time, and still many people and the majority of database are actually relational database. And there should be some reason why relational database is so popular and is still widely used. One of the reasons is because it is highly structured. So basically, you will go through all these kind of database, database design steps. You will create conceptual diagram and you will also do relational modeling and then you do implementation. So your database is very structured. Even from the designing phase, you will know exactly what kind of data you want to store and how your database should be implemented and designed. So you have the full idea about your structure of the database. So it's highly structured. And relational database is always consistent. It means that the data should be always up to date. So the database server itself will try to make all the data to be up to date. So if you make some change, that change will be made available to everyone, basically. So what it means is this. So I can give you this example. So there's this database system. It's a relational database. And there is one user who are trying to update some information in the database. So he sent some query. So he's uh, submit update query to the database system to update some information. At the same time, there might be another user. So let's say it's user A and this is user B. So user B is trying to read the data. However, the update is not done yet. Then what's happening is that the relational database system will make the user B to wait until the update is done. And after update is made, now it's user B's turn. So he can read the data uh, which is updated in the system. So in this way, the data is always consistent. If someone updates it, you will see the new information. So that's what relational database is very good. So relational database is especially useful for a transaction system, like a banking system. So in the banking system, if you uh, deposit money or if you withdraw money, then that update must be consistent, right? So that's why relational database system is really popular in a banking system uh, where the consistency of data is very important. Then is a relational database perfect? 
uh, it is not right because if uh, someone asks if something is perfect usually the answer is uh, uh, maybe not so same for relational database it doesn't work sometimes and let me tell you uh, a little bit of why using a very simple example so let's just think about how the data will be stored in relational database system first so let's just assume that we have a customer table in our relational database system and we have a customer information stored in this table like this. So you can see that uh, each row represents a different customer information and it's just stored like this. So we have a customer ID and their name, email address, and phone number. So that's uh, our first design. So we designed the customer table like this in the beginning. So it, it's working, but let's just say that now it is very common for people to have more than one phone number, right? So sometimes people may have a home phone number and they also have a work phone number. So uh, now let's say that we want to change the design of the table and we want to make people to store two phone numbers. Then uh, what we can do intuitively is simply add a new field. We can add a new field for the second phone number. So we make a new column here for second phone number and uh, we are simply able to store a second phone number here. So it looks like it's not bad, uh, it's working, so it looks fine. But a few years later, now let's say that people are having more phone number. So what if we want to store all the phone numbers of every customer? So even for me, I have a multiple phone number. So in Hong Kong, I have a two phone number and I also have a office phone number. So I have a three phone number in Hong Kong. And also I have a US phone number and I also have a Korean phone number. So I have like a five or six phone number basically. So it is getting more common, right? The world is more global. So you have a more chance to uh, work or live in other area then uh, naturally you have a more than like a, a few phone numbers basically. Then what if we want to store all the phone numbers of every customer? Uh, one approach here will be simply we add a, uh, more phone number field, right? Phone number three, phone number four, phone number five, something like that. Um, let's just say that uh, the maximum, we can also make some max, uh, limit, right? So every customer may have a maximum 10 phone number, then we can keep making additional column. So we can have a 10 phone number columns in our table. The design is not that good, uh, but we can do it, right? And there is a problem here. So let's just say that we added like a, 10 phone numbers. Then what is the problem? Most of the people will not have like a 10 phone number. Most of people may have like a two phone number. Uh, if they say that they have a lot of phone number, they may have like a three or something like that. It is very unlikely for everyone to have like a five, 10 phone numbers, right? Unless you are doing like some uh, like retail business or something like that. So what's going to happen is that when you keep customer's information here in this table, many of the cells will be left empty. So basically you designed this table with the multiple phone number field. And for most of the customer, many of these place spaces will be reserved to save the phone number. However, in the reality, many people don't have the phone number, so many of the fields will be simply left empty. So, I mean, this design still works, but it's very inefficient because we are basically wasting the storage in this case. We are just uh, making a big table, but we are not really utilizing it fully. But still works, right? It looks like it's just still working in some sense. Uh, but actually it's not that efficient. It's because there's another reason. So let's say that we have uh, here the Donald Trump and he has a lot of phone number. And let's say that he does not have a phone, this one anymore. So if he doesn't have this phone number anymore, uh, what should we do? So what should we do is this? We have to delete this phone number, right? If we delete that phone number, basically this field will be empty. The phone number one field is empty. That's kind of weird, right? So it should be, it should have some information. And then later, maybe phone number six will be empty or something like that. So we remove this phone number. And then we simply uh, move phone number 
uh, one by one. So phone number two will be moved here, phone number three will be moved here, phone number four, phone number five will be moved one step ahead like this. So basically, simply to delete one information, we have to perform multiple operations. So this design is basically not that uh, efficient. So the question is this, do we really need to move data every time after deletion? So this is very not efficient design, right? So is there any other better way? So if we, if we utilize a relational database system, uh, another possible solution is uh, utilizing many-to-many -many relationship, right? So we can try to utilize a relationship to represent some phone number information. So uh, one possible way is that between customer table and we can design the phone number table and we can store all the phone number information here and we can design uh, one-to-many or many-to-many -many relationship. So depending on the assumption. So in this case, I created a many-to-many -many relationship assuming that one phone number may be shared by many people. So if the phone number is for a uh, home, then in that home, multiple people will live. So they may share the phone, something like that. So if we design like this, we can only keep customer information here and we can keep only phone number information here. And in this assignment relationship in the middle, which is many to many, we can create that into table and we can simply keep the assignment information here, right? So customer one, has a phone number 101, customer two has a phone number 102, and customer three has a two phone number 301 and 302, something like that. So in that case, uh, we don't waste any like a storage space, right? Because there is no empty cell in this case. So this design seems okay. However, uh, this design also has some inefficiency. One of the biggest inefficiency is join, basically. What's happening is this. Uh, when we try to retrieve a phone number for customer ID one, basically we have to look at this customer table and we have to find the customer one and we have to look at his information. And then we have to look at this many to many uh, table, many to many relationship table. And we have to find the assignment. So which phone number is assigned to customer one? So we have to look at this table and find the customer ID one and we have to find the matching phone number ID. And then to find the real phone number, we have to look at this table again. And we have to find the matching phone ID. And then finally, we will know phone number information. So we have to do many matchings, basically, across tables. So basically, yeah, we talk about this process, right? We, in the relational database system, we call this process as join. Uh, basically, it will match data from two or more tables based on the same value in column you specify. So basically based on the primary key and foreign key, it will make a match. So that's the process of join. But the problem is that the relational database, the join process requires a table scan. Table scan means that to find a certain information, so to find the custom ID one, the relational database has to read all the data in the table. So it will be very slow. So it has to read all the data in the table, all the data in this table, all the data in this table. So the time cost will be very huge. So you may ask, does it really take that long? So I prepared some example to infer uh, what's the kind of time cost it will take to finish the join process. So to make the things simple, I change the relationship into one to many relationship. So uh, customer information will be in the customer table and phone number information will be in the phone number table and there's one to many relationship. So one customer can have many phone number, but each phone number belongs to only one customer. So there is uh, in the phone number field, there is a customer ID here. So basically join is a process of combining data from multiple tables and so it will match. So based on this design, customer table will look like this and phone number table will look like this here. So if we use a naive join, so uh, basically if we use just a regular join, then this will happen. So to find out a phone number for every customer. So what we want to know is that we have a city customer and for each customer, we want to know what phone number belongs to them. Then we we'll design this kind of query, right? So we select this customer ID, name, phone number, 
uh, phone, phone ID and phone number uh, from customer and we use join and phone number table together like this. So basically what's happening will be this. So for the first customer, whose ID is one, two, three, uh, the MySQL will try to look for a match. So it will look for all the tables and it will find a match here. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Found the two match and phone number is here and here. And then uh, MySQL will prepare the SQL output, the result of the query. So it will add one, two, three, one, two, three, and phone one, phone three, like this, based on the match. And then it will go to the the next customer whose ID is 456 and it will go through the same step. It will read the entire table and then it will find a match. Here 456 is a match. Page phone number is here. So it will add into the result. So basically for each customer, MySQL will scan the entire phone table and MySQL will do that for every customer like this. So basically, how long does it take? We can make some calculation here. So let's say that we have an N rows in the customer table. So we have an N number of a customer and we have an M rows in order table. I mean, not order, the phone table. Basically, we have an M uh, number of phones information stored in the phone table. Then total cost of a lead in MySQL will be n multiplied by m because there is n number of customer and there is m number of phone number. For each customer, the MySQL will read all this phone number information. So total read operation, MySQL will perform is basically n multiplied by m like this. So that's uh, a lot actually. So if we have a uh, hundred customer and if and on average, let's say that uh, people have a five phone number. Then we have a five phone number here. Then total lead will be simply uh, 50,000, something like that. So if you think about how many people are using online services these days, uh, this number will increase exponentially, actually. So let's just think about this. Facebook has 2 billion active users. And if each people, let's just assume that each person has a two phone number, then there will be 4 billion phone number. So if you multiply 2 billion by 4 billion, that's basically number I cannot express. So in this kind of a case, in this kind of example, when there are too many data, the join will take a lot of time, basically. If you, join, if you use join, it will take a lot of time and it will not be efficient. So that's the problem of the relational database. Relational database is very slow. And this uh, graph basically uh, shows and compares the speed of a relational database against uh, NoSQL, which is uh, the database system designed for big data system. Uh, so here it's comparing MongoDB, which we are going to utilize against SQL, which is a relational database. So it's showing how many operations uh, each database system is able to perform in one second. So MongoDB is able to do about uh, 1,000 insert operations, so 1,000 adding new data operation, and about 4,000 uh, query operation in one second. However, SQL can do only like, uh, yeah, I don't know, about 100 insert operation and less than 500 query operation in one second. So if you compare the speed, basically uh, the MongoDB, basically no SQL database system is able to do a much more operation in the same time. So basically the thing is this, relational database is good. It has multiple advantages. However, relational database is slow. So it may not be appropriate for the big data system. And the question is this, uh, but still relational database is very popular in the real world and many companies are utilizing it still and is learning no SQL really helpful? So you may ask this question, like uh, if you work in a company, then 
uh, you will see that a lot of relational database is actually utilized. And I can show you actually this graph here. So um, basically this graph shows uh, the type of data we are dealing in the real world and how it changed since 1970 to uh, 2025, basically, something like that. So for the past two decades, uh, we can see that there has been a lot of change and there is an exponential increase of data. So basically until 1999, all the data we dealt in the real world was a business transaction data. So basically relational database system and the entire database like architecture was implemented because we needed to deal with the business transaction data, basically the number, like a financial information, like a banking system. So um, all this system is at first developed for that purpose. So how to, uh, how to do accounting much easier, easily. So that was main purpose in the beginning. However, since 1990, the things changed. So business transaction data is still increasing because uh, more and more people are utilizing like a different banking system and a lot of people are doing like a stock trading and there are a lot of things we can do. However, the increase is actually not that much. It's just slow because the only data which we are dealing in the financial system is a number. Number is a very simple data. It's like, a, uh, it's, it's a very simple data actually. But since 1990, there has been increase in the online service. So we are dealing more different types of data than number now. So there's YouTube, which contains video data, and there's Instagram, which contains image data, and also blog, and there are many textual data available online. So those data are much more complex than a business transaction. And also, uh, the speed of increasing those data is much fast. So think about it. How many times uh, do you withdraw money from your bank account every day? Not that much, right? Maybe, um, yeah, I, I didn't draw any money from my bank account today and I didn't deposit anything today. So in my bank account, there is no change basically. But if you think about web application data, how many times did you uh, use Instagram today? How many times did you use Facebook today? How many times did you use the WeChat today? Probably you did a lot, right? You sent a message to a friend, you send an email, you watch YouTube. So you do this like uh, every day, not just once every day, you do multiple times every day. So simply the business transaction data, we don't do that much compared to web application data. We use much more of this and the speed of increasing this data is much exponential. So that's where the big data comes from. So if I think about, if I explain about some characteristics of big data, then I can summarize it in these three ways. So first of all, the volume. Uh, big data is big data. By definition, the size of data itself is big. So in the transaction system, we are talking about number, but now in the big data system, we are talking about video, image, textual data. So the size is bigger. Uh, so to store this big data system in the like server, um, you have to keep increase the server basically because more and more data will be accumulated every day. So expansion of the system is very costly. And second is the velocity, basically the speed of request. Okay, in the financial system, you don't, uh, yeah, you don't request that much. You don't send the request that much. What I mean is that you don't withdraw your money that much. You don't deposit your money that much. Maybe you do a few times in a month, that's all. However, in the web application and in the big data system, this happens a lot. So a lot of people at the same time watch Netflix and a lot of people at the same time use YouTube and a lot of people at the same time they chat in a WeChat and something like that. So there are a lot of rapid requests, requests which happens much more uh, often and frequently. So keeping consistency will slow the process. So let's say that there are multiple people uh, who are like sending a message to each other. So let's say that he sent a message and we have to wait the other people. Yeah, if we make other people to wait until his message is sent first, then they will be annoyed, right? 
because they need to send the message right now, but they cannot do it. They have to wait. Then they will not like it. So keeping the consistency will slow the process. And in the big data system, speed is actually more important in online services. So let's just say that if you uh, try to like log in YouTube and you if you try to watch some video from the YouTube and you have to wait for like uh, 10 seconds to watch your YouTube until the first person finishes watching or something like that, then uh, you will not like it because you have to wait. And people are very impatient in the online service. So speed is very important. And also the last characteristics is variety. So basically uh, there are multimedia and use of this type of multimedia is increasing in the online service. There are uh, people are utilizing more of texture, video, image information. So this kind of data is very difficult to fit into predefined structure. So when you think about relational database system, we have to define everything. We have to define what kind of a field will exist in the table. And we also have to define what kind of a data type will be for that field. However, defining something like that is more complex in these days because some data may not follow that kind of predefined structure. So these are characteristics of big data and that's why um, relational database system may not be appropriate to manage and deal with this kind of uh, data. So demand for uh, big data solutions and big data experts are actually increasing a lot. Uh, probably you already know about this. So these days, whenever uh, there is a problem and whenever there is some situation, uh, usually there is like all the senior guy, right, in the company, and they will try to do something new. And they will already ask, uh, let's solve this kind of problem by using big data, uh, even though we don't know, yeah, we don't have any idea about that. So many people are talking about big data is important and there's an increasing demand, uh, but many people actually currently uh, do not know about big data system uh, that much because it's kind of a new system. And also older people uh, didn't have any, yeah, didn't have any like uh, uh, access to this kind of system before. So that's why. So demand is increasing. Actually, that's good for you. So if something, if some, if demand in some area is increasing, and if you are in that area, that's actually a good news for you. So this is uh, uh, one thing uh, I want to show you. So there are several statistics I want to share with you. So first one is this. So in the US, uh, so this is the actually survey from the US. So it might be different from Hong Kong situation, uh, but it will be similar. Uh, that's my expectation. So we surveyed what is, a, and we asked a question, what is the highest paying major in business school? So basically after, I think this survey is done in 2015. So in 2015, uh, we asked for the uh, people who studied in the business school. So for undergraduate students, after they graduate from the business school, uh, we asked what their starting salary. So that survey was done in 2015. And can you guess what was the highest starting salary? So that can be, it can be like a finance, accounting, marketing, or information systems, right? So there could be many uh, different guests. So when I just ask this question to people, many people say, oh, maybe it's finance or something like that. Because if you think about finance, there is some kind of a preconception, right? So finance people will make a lot of money. That's what yeah, many people like have it in their mind somehow. But actually, that's not true these days. Things are changing. So these are the survey results, actually. So if you look at it, uh, this is for, yeah, so here, this is the survey research for the undergraduate students, undergraduate major. So basically students who did information system major. So yeah, the, uh, here the red one is bachelor's degree and the uh, uh, gray one is master's degree. So if you look at the US, people who 
uh, graduated from with the information systems major, uh, if they got undergraduate degree, then their salary is the highest over other people, right? So second highest was finance, but the most uh, highest starting pay salary was uh, information systems in the US. And if you look at the master's degree, it's the same. Highest one was information systems. And the second highest one was actually marketing. And finance was the third highest. So it's very different from what people usually expect. So information system was top. And also, oh yeah, this is the starting salary. And also if you look at their bonus, so how much bonus they uh, make every year for uh, basically for people who got bachelor's degree in information system, they made about 6,500 more. And the uh, masters, they made about 10,000 more bonus basically. So uh, this survey is all talking about that uh, people who major in information system tend to make more money after uh, their graduation because, because uh, the answer is simple, right? Because there is a much bigger demand for this kind of area. So probably you heard about that uh, for the like Goldman Sachs. So Goldman Sachs is a very uh, popular and very reputable bank in the world. And even for Goldman Sachs, um, the CEO said uh, said this multiple times. So he always goes to the like a technology conference in the uh, California, and whenever he goes there, he already say that the Goldman Sachs is a technology company. It's not finance company. That's what they say. That's what the CEO say. And actually, if you look at um, what kind of people Goldman Sachs uh, hired, that kind of makes sense. So if you look at the number of like new employee in the Goldman Sachs, so most of the employee Goldman Sachs is hiring is not from the finance graduate. So they hire more people in computer science, computer engineering, and also information systems. So you can see that how the demand in this area is increasing. So you have to basically take an advantage of this kind of trend. So there's a lot of demand in this area and you guys are in the ITM program. So you have to utilize this uh, when you try to get a job and when you graduate basically in the in a long term. In your career, you have to utilize it, this trend uh, definitely. So when you prepare your CV for, uh, to look for a job, you have to utilize it too. You have to write down all the skills you can do. So this is just one, uh, like a funny cartoon that I got from the, yeah, some website. And it says that he's asking, do you have any expertise in SQL? And he says, no. Oh, then it's good. You have to write down expert in no SQL. Then you'll get a job or something like that. Because no SQL is booming or something like that. So so not just no SQL, like when you prepare your CV, uh, you have to like uh, basically kind of uh, list everything you can do. So um, you should be able to, deal with some Python from other course, and also uh, something like a Microsoft Power BI, which is a very good uh, visualization tool. And also Tableau, you can try, and uh, which is very similar to the Power BI. And also like uh, MySQL, MongoDB, which we will cover in this course. You have to yeah, utilize that kind of skills when you prepare your CV and when you prepare for your uh, like job searching. So that's uh, uh, what I want to tell you basically briefly, why this field is important and why this area is actually, uh, it can be beneficial for you. So I keep talking about no SQL, right? So whenever I talk about like a big data system and database designed for big data system, I already mentioned no SQL and what is actually no SQL? So let me give you an answer for that. No SQL itself stands for not only SQL. So basically, traditionally, we talked about SQL a lot because that's the most important thing in the relational database system. But now we are talking that not only SQL, but there are also more important things. So that's uh, uh, the basically what no SQL stands for. And when you, in the no SQL basically in the big data system, you may forget the relationship. So there is no such thing as a relationship in the NoSQL anymore. 
So there is no more relation. There is no more foreign key. There is no more join. So basically, NoSQL is a non-relational database management system. So you may forget everything about relationship. And there are several features uh, you have to keep in mind when you deal with the NoSQL. The first one is a flexible data model. So if you remember what we covered in our course for the relational database part, we put a lot of time on conceptual data modeling and relational data modeling, right? So most of the parts were about data modeling, basically. Because relational database, when you design it, it should be highly structured. So you have to follow a systematic way of designing your database system. So that was for relational database. But in NoSQL, it provides flexible data model. And basically the assumption is that nothing is, uh, nothing should be like structured. It can change anytime. So it's a dynamic schema, basically. Then the question is this, how to guarantee consistent data structure? And what if more features are added over time? So basically, we in the NoSQL, we are assuming that consistent data structure is not possible because data structure may change over time. And more features may be added into the system over time. In that case, the data structure should be very flexible. So that's what NoSQL is talking. So for example, something like this. When Facebook first came out in the world, it just looked like this. It only had a posting part. So I simply posted something about and people come and read, that's all. And later, the Facebook added a comment feature. So now I can see what others wrote and I can comment on it. So there is additional, uh, like a structure added into the system. And later, in 2009, they added something great. So they added the like button, which changed the world, right? So now everywhere you will see this button. So there is a like button in YouTube and you know, there's also even in WeChat, Instagram and everywhere. So this was first introduced by Facebook in 2009 and now it's just so common. And in 2010, they added the like button even for the comment. And then later in 2016, they added the multiple reaction. So you may like, you may send a heart, or you may cry, and you may be surprised, you may be happy, you may be angry. And then in 2017, uh, and also from time to time, they add a new icon. So this is for the uh, LGBT rights. And this is for, uh, this I'm not sure what it is, but yeah, something like that. So they are keep adding new feature and basically the online service is keep changing every time. So defining consistent structure is not possible in this kind of uh, frequently changing uh, online services, basically. So in NoSQL, basically they provide a dynamic schema, which is a flexible structure, which adopts a flexible structure. And in, uh, in the case of MongoDB, which we are going to utilize in this course, they have a hierarchical structure to manage data. So hierarchical structure, what I mean is that, so there is a user data first, and inside the user data, you may embed host data. So user posts this, so there is hierarchy. So user is the first hierarchy, and inside that you can embed the post document, and inside that you can add a comment doc document like this. So whenever a new feature is added, you can simply add the inside. So there is hierarchical structure, and there is also no predefined structure. So if you remember when you implement a relational database, when you implement a table, you have to define data type for each field. So uh, step ID should be number, name should be textual data, something like that. However, in NoSQL, there is no data type. So you don't define data type. So there is a post, it might be text, image, or video. Anything you want, you can put it there. So it's very flexible. And also if you need a new field, you can add it anytime. And also if you need a new hierarchy, you can add it anytime. So like and reaction, previously it didn't exist. 
but from like 2009, you can add it. Also, same thing for comment from 2010, you can add it. So basically, every data follows a different structure. That is uh, absolutely okay in the NoSQL design. So I'm going to talk more about the details of how to design the uh, NoSQL data document uh, next week, but that's a very like, basic thing, so you can uh, have an idea. And other feature is this, high throughput, high data throughput. So what it means is this. So let's say that we have like a big data system here. So this big data system, the size is just really big. So let's say that we are not able to store this big data into one server, that's also possible. Let's say that this is a customer information, but we are dealing with it. So this company is a really huge company like Facebook. So there are like 2 billion customer information. So it is very difficult to manage all the customer information in one server. Then what they do is that they, they simply divide this data into A part, B part, C part, and set store this uh, in a different area. So A, uh, so some of the customer information is stored here, and some of the other customer information will be stored here, and the rest of the customer information might be stored here, something like that. And then they make a replication. So they prepare more servers and they simply copy uh, pre-existing data into this server. So for the customer C, customer part C, uh, this data might be copied here and here. So they make a replica. Why they do that? Because they want to increase the speed. How to increase the speed by doing that is this. So same information, is stored in three different servers. Then the user A, he wants to read the data. Then he can maybe send a request into this server and he can get the result, right? And there's another user who want to read the data at the same time. So he may send a request to another server and this server will process it and send the result to B. So basically by preparing multiple data in a different server, uh, the company is able to handle multiple response at the same time. So this will be much faster. So instead of having one server dealing with all the requests, they can prepare the multiple server with the same data, and then they are able to uh, respond to multiple users much faster. So that's what one another feature of NoSQL, the high data throughput. And how and another feature is this, the big data processing. So I want to show you how the NoSQL actually, or other big data system can actually process uh, kind of data analysis much faster. So let's say that this user want to read and process the big data, basically, uh, or ABC part. Basically, he want to do something about the customer information. He want to analyze it, and he want to get some information from out of it. Then what's happening is this, so A, B, C part are saved in a different server in this case. So if we send a request to the server to process this entire uh, customer information to get some results, then what's happening is that since A part, B part, C part are stored separately, uh, simply uh, this request will be sent to all three server. And here, A's, A part's information will be processed and B part's information here, C part's information here will be processed. And the results will be simply uh, sent to here and it, it will be combined later together. And then that research will be sent to the user. So instead of, uh, again, one server processing the entire amount of big data, uh, since uh, we are asking multiple servers to process each part, uh, we can process this kind of uh, uh, analysis much faster by utilizing big data processing uh, scheme, basically. So that's another way of a big data system to increase the speed in terms of analysis. And the last part, the interesting feature is this, the eventual consistency. What it means is this, in the relational database system, in the beginning I showed an example and said that the information is always consistent. So if you withdraw money, if you deposit money into your bank account, that should be reflected and everyone has to see the same information. 
it's very important in the financial system. And because uh, uh, if uh, someone lose money, then it will make like a big problem in the company's reputation. However, in the big data system, we don't care much about consistency. We are talking that eventually the data should be consistent. However, at some times, data may not be consistent and it's totally okay. That's the basic assumption of utilizing big data system. So what I mean is this. So let's just say that uh, data is stored like this. And this user update data stored here in this server. So now uh, part, uh, the C part of data is changed into C prime like this. So there are some updates, data is changed. However, the other two servers, data are not changed yet, right? This update should be reflected in other server too, so that it's consistent. So between these servers, they keep communicating whether there's any change. So this server, two server will communicate and find that here there is update. So this server will sync the updated part with this new data. So this server is updated. However, at that time, uh, this server is not updated yet. So this server contains all the data of the C. At that time, if this user, another user B, he tried to read data from this server, if it is a relational database system, we should make him wait until all the update is done. But in the NoSQL big data system, we don't make him wait because speed is important. If he ask request, or he, if he requests to read the operation, then we simply send him all the data, which is not up to date. So we simply provide that. Then your question might be, is this really okay? Is this safe? And if you think about it, it's actually okay. So let's just say that um, you, let's just say that on Facebook or any other like uh, um, social network, uh, you posted some article, right? You posted some article and there is a friend A, he read it and he posted the comment. And this is stored in one server, right? And there's another server. So it's a syncing with this database server. However, it has your post information, but it's not synced with the comment information. So in this server, uh, there's your post, but there's no comment, uh, which is written by A already. So here, age comment is showing. Here, age comment is not showing. And there's user B, he's reading this post. He doesn't say comment. It's fine, right? There's no problem. Maybe five minutes later, if it's synced, he can see the comment. So he's looking at this comment five minutes later. That's totally fine. In the banking industry, or if you are like uh, trading stocks, this is a super huge problem, right? So you cannot use a uh, big data system. You have to use a relational database system for the consistency. But in online service, this kind of problem is fine. You are just looking at update a little bit late and there is no problem. So that's why in NoSQL, they are giving up consistency for the speed. So here is just some summary. Uh, comparing between relational database and NoSQL. So in the relational database, data type is highly structured. You have to define what kind of data and what kind of structure uh, the table is following. In NoSQL, it's unstructured, uh, which means it's flexible. You can add it anytime and you don't need to define the data type. So in the relational database, data management is uh, traditionally centralized, but in NoSQL, it's distributed. So we utilize multiple servers for the speed and relational database, data should be consistent, but in NoSQL, we are talking about eventual consistency. So in the end, it will be consistent, but meanwhile, it may not be consistent. And performance, relational database, the performance will decrease as the size of the data increase because uh, the, the complexity increases exponentially when you have multiple tables and when you have to utilize join. In NoSQL, it's a scalable because uh, if you need more performance, if you need more computing power, you can simply add a new server. So it's a scalable. So basically, 
relational database is appropriate when the consistency is critical in your service. And, and NoSQL is appropriate when you need to process big amount of data and the speed is important. So that's the main difference between relational database and NoSQL. So here is some like a real world example of uh, adoption of big data solution. So this is from, uh, this data is a little bit old. I think uh, uh, I filed this data around 2015, so five years ago. Uh, at the time, Apple was known to utilizing like 75,000 servers for the big data system. So basically Apple is a kind of an industry leader in utilizing big data system. I mean, you know why, right? Apple has a lot of information they are dealing with and Apple has customers in all over the world. And everyone who are using iPhone, uh, they are data Apple should uh, to store and uh, manage and deal with it. So they are utilizing a lot of big data server. And Apple is uh, uh, dealing at the time about 10 petabyte of data. So uh, I never heard of a petabyte, petabyte, but it's actually about 10 million gigabyte. And Netflix is also another uh, leader in this area. So they are utilizing 2,500 servers. Uh, I'm sure now they are utilizing more because uh, now they are doing service in many other countries, not just in the US. And they are dealing with about 420 terabyte of data and they are receiving a lot of requests. So across uh, the US, a lot of people are requesting for the video, right? They are uh, sending about 1 trillion requests every day, basically. And eBay is another leader. They are utilizing about 500 server. They are dealing with five petabytes of data. And ESO, um, I think it's a Chinese company. They are utilizing about 270 servers and dealing with 300 terabytes of data. And also they are dealing with about 800 million requests every day. And these are just a few examples. Uh, almost all the companies these days are also utilizing big data system. So something like, uh, some examples are here, Adobe, BMW, Comcast, which is a cable uh, TV company, and Craigslist, Facebook, Foursquare, Google, Hulu, IBM, Instagram, LinkedIn, Nordstrom, which is a retail store, and Reddit, and Sakade Capital, which is a uh, finance company, SAP, Shutterfly, uh, Weather Channel, Twitter, Yahoo, they all utilize big data system. And another company which might be interesting is BMW. Uh, can you guess why BMW is utilizing big data system? Because uh, BMW is a car company, right? Car manufacturing company. So they make a car and they simply sell a car to the people. And it looks like they there's nothing like uh, concerned about the big data. Anyone can think of why BMW is uh, utilizing big data system. If you have any idea, you may uh, write down that on the Zoom chat box, why you think BMW is also utilizing uh, big data system. So autonomous vehicle, right? Yeah, that's one, yeah, that's one thing, autonomous vehicle. So, Internet of vehicle. Yeah, that's also a very good question. So basically, yeah, now IT, information technology is embedded in a car, right? And especially for BMW, so uh, BMW is just selling like a more uh, luxury car, so more expensive car. And when people buy BMW, uh, usually many people do not care much about money, right? Because uh, the car is already expensive and those people are already able to afford it. So the customers who are buying BMW is different from the customers who are buying uh, like, a, uh, yeah, like a cheaper cars, yeah, right? So usually in, uh, in most of the cars that BMW are selling, many of the IT feature are already embedded. So there's a GPS system embedded there. Uh, there's like an internet system embedded there like that. So BMW is utilizing this information. So a customer drives a car from location A to location B. So a customer drives a car from a home to workplace. Then all this GPS, GPS information 
is collected in the BMW server. So where they start a car, where they drive, and when they are driving, uh, which, which route they choose, and also uh, how fast they drive, when they stop the car, when they press the brake, when they accelerate. All these informations are collected in the BMW server. So basically, the BMW is uh, trying to save and collect all this information from the customer and trying to develop like a better like routing system or also they may utilize that information to develop the autonomous vehicle, right? The uh, self-driving car or something like that. So that's why BMW is also utilizing a big data system. So basically, in many fields these days, yeah, big data system is utilized. Okay, so I have some discussion here. So maybe you can think about this question. So the first one is this. I have some uh, scenario here and you can think of whether, uh, in, in this scenario, you can think of whether relational database system is more appropriate or big data system is more appropriate. The first one is this. Tom opened a pizza store providing free delivery in the local area. He wants to establish database for managing customer delivery information and sales transaction. So in this case, should Tom use no SQL for database? So what do you think? Can you answer that on the Zoom chat box? Do you think Tom should use a relational database system or a no SQL database system? for this purpose. Uh, the, the daily records, okay. Anyways, like, uh, what do you think? So relation, so RDB or no SQL. So you can just type what do you think in the Zoom chat box? I just want to know whether uh, we are on the like the same page. Yeah, so yeah. One student said that we should use MySQL. The data volume is not big enough to use NoSQL and the transaction data need to be updated in real time. Actually, yeah, this is a very, yeah, very like a standard and perfect answer. So it's exactly what I wanted to tell you. So first of all, the main thing is this, right, local area. So in the local area, there will not be that many customers. So maybe 100. Um, if his business is doing really well, maybe 1,000, yeah, he will not have like a million customers, right? So in this case, uh, no SQL is actually a waste of money. So he doesn't need to utilize no SQL. Uh, he can simply use a uh, relational uh, database system. And also, uh, as uh, uh, Jirong said, the transaction data needed to be up to date in real time, right? So say the transaction information and the delivery information should be consistent. So uh, this kind of information should be consistent. So we have to use relational database in this case. Okay, yeah. So most of you guys are answered correctly for that. And the next one is this. Tom is trying to expand his business nationwide and even worldwide now. So he also wants to analyze the social networks to meet customers' demands in developing new products. So basically Tom, the business is doing so well, so he uh, is not satisfied with the local area. So he wants to make more branch and he wants to expand his business uh, nationwide and even worldwide. So, and he also wants to analyze the social networks, which has a lot of data to meet customer's demand. So in this case, should Tom use no SQL? So what do you think? So I think for this one, it's obvious. I mean, uh, since we don't have enough time, I just uh, uh, tell you the answer, but probably you would already guess. So in this case, 
uh, NoSQL is more appropriate, right? Because uh, he's expanding his business into nationwide, worldwide. So we can expect a lot of information. And also uh, he wants to analyze the social networks. So for this purpose, analyzing social networks, so social networks contain a lot of information, uh, which has also a lot of different data type. So relational database is not enough to uh, deal with this kind of big amount of data. So in this case, for this purpose, we have to utilize no SQL system. So the last one, uh, Jamie, it's a slightly different scenario. So Jamie is a CIO of a startup financial firm. Uh, she needs to decide the database solution supporting financial analysts. So financial analysts is basically who are looking at a previous stock trend. So previous stock data, and then they analyze it and they provide insights. So that's their job. And also real-time traders. Real-time traders are who has to make a, a stock transaction in a real time. So basically she wants to decide the database solution supporting financial analysts and real-time traders in the company. So which database solution should Jamie adopt? So can you answer for this question? Can you use the Zoom chat box and uh, simply type what you think is the correct answer? RDB, NoSQL, what do you think? Yeah, actually, yeah. So you paste that RDB and NoSQL. Actually, that's the right answer. So in this case, we cannot use just one system, right? So uh, sometimes when I ask this question, some people say RDB, some people say NoSQL. So they usually don't come up with uh, an answer, RDB and NoSQL together. But in this case, actually, we have to utilize uh, both. And actually, it's very common in the company. So, so using relational database and no SQL, it's not like a black and white. It's not like a one and zero. Uh, you are able to utilize both of them together depending on your purpose in the company. So in this case, for the financial analyst, they have to analyze a big amount of data, right? Historical stock data, so that's huge. So we have to provide no SQL for them. For the real-time traders, we have to provide um, relational database because uh, they have to make a financial transactions, stock transaction in a real time. So consistency is very important. So in this case, we can utilize yeah, both of the database system together. And actually that's what uh, many companies, including uh, my French company is doing. So um, that's what I want to mention.